Hey, before we begin this tutorial, I want to give a shout out to the winners of our last competition. The first winner was Mr. John Wees with a score of 172. They had the high score when the competition was closed. But we also have another winner, Lolo Mags 100 with a score of 176. The score came in after the competition was closed. And that was possible due to a bug on our end, where if you started the game before the competition closed, you were still able to submit your score. So we've sent a $20 gift card to both of those winners. Then the winner of our daily entry was user dad1. So we've also sent another $20 gift card to them. Now we've already fixed some bugs and made some changes to our sneak cube game. And so starting today, we'll be clearing the leaderboard and starting a new week-long competition. So if you didn't win a prize this last week, you'll have another opportunity this week. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, I have a very quick game mechanic, and that is how to create a mute button for your games. I created this game mechanic for my Snake Cube game, and I'd like to demonstrate that for you right now. So I'm going to click play in my project and then I'm going to find this login panel and disable it so I can get to my play button. I'm then going to click the play button so I'll load into the game scene and here in the top right corner you can see that I have a little speaker icon which is a toggle and when I click on the speaker icon it turns off all the audio but before I click it I'm going to pick up some food so that you can tell that there's audio in my game. So there you go, you can hear me picking up the food. Then I'm going to click the speaker, which will turn off the toggle. And now when I pick up some food, you can hear that it is silent. Now there's one thing that I need to fix for this game mechanic in my Snake Cube game. And that is when I play my game and I turn off the audio and then I go back to the main menu. When I load back into the game scene, the audio toggle button is back on. You can see the little sound waves. But when I pick up food, no sound plays. And so what I need to do is make it so that if the audio is off, the toggle is also off. And this is an error that was found by Mr. John Wees as he was playing our competition. And so I'm going to open up the script that controls my toggle, which is this game controller script. And in the script, the first thing that I need to do is add the namespace using unityengine.ui to the top. Once I've added that namespace, I can then create a toggle variable. So this is going to be a serialized field of type toggle, and I'm going to call it audio toggle. Then I'm going to go to my start function, and in my start function, I'm going to create an if statement, checking to see if the audio listener dot volume is equal to zero and if it's equal to zero that means that our game is muted and so I can then turn off the audio toggle so inside this if statement I'm going to type audio toggle dot is on equals false now I'm going to save this script go back to unity and we'll test my project here you can see that I have my game running and the audio is currently working and so I'm going to disable it by clicking the toggle button and then I'll click the back button to go back to the main menu and then I'll disable my login panel once again and I'll click the play button and now you can see that the audio toggle is turned off there's no sound waves it's just the speaker and so I fixed that little inconsistency so now let me show you how to create this game mechanic from the beginning the first thing that you'll want to do is open up your browser and search for a speaker icon. You can type in speaker icon PNG and I'm just going to use this first image. So I'll save it. You'll then need to open this image in some photo editing software. I'm just going to use Photoshop for this but there are other applications out there that can do the same thing. Now the first thing that I'm going to do to this image is invert the color because I like using white UI icons so that I can set the color myself in Unity. To do this, you'll go up to Image, Adjust, and then Invert. Once you've done that, we then need to select the Marquee tool, and we're going to select either the speaker or the sound waves coming out of the speaker, and then you're going to want to cut that and paste it into a new layer. And when you paste it, you're going to want to use Control-Shift-V 
and that way it'll paste it in the same place it was before. So now that we have these two parts of our image on separate layers, we need to save each of these layers as its own image. And so I'm going to disable one of the layers and save the speaker, and then disable the other layer and save the sound waves. Now when you're saving these images, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're saving them with the same dimensions. Now once you've done that, we can go to a new Unity project. And so here I have just my Asset Builder project, and I've created a new file location for this game mechanic. We then need to import both of the images that we created into our project. So I'm gonna create a new folder for sprites and UI, and then I'll drag these images into this location. We then need to select both of these images and convert them into sprites using the texture type drop-down menu. I'm then going to click apply. From here, we can then start building this game mechanic. So I'm going to create a new canvas game object in my scene, and I'm going to add a default UI toggle game object to my canvas. We then want to delete the title text object, which is a child to the default toggle. I'm then going to resize this toggle so it's a little bigger, and I'm going to resize the check mark as well. We can then add our images to this toggle. And so for the background object, we're going to add the speaker image. And then for the check mark object, we're going to add the sound wave image. We can then reposition this in the top right corner of our canvas. From here, we then need to create a script that we can pair to this game object. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call it Mute Toggle, and then I'm going to open it up in Visual Studios. Inside the script, we can then delete the update function, and we're going to add the using Unity Engine.UI namespace up at the top. We can then recreate the same thing that I've already showed you when fixing the problem in my Snake Cube project. So I'm going to add a new toggle variable, and I'll call it my toggle. In the start function, we can then initialize this variable by calling my toggle equals git component, and then we're going to search for a toggle. Then if we want, we can make this toggle variable a required component. And so up above our class, I'm going to type in square brackets, require component, and then in parentheses, type of, and in more parentheses, toggle. This will make it so that whenever we add the script to a game object, it'll automatically add the toggle component if it doesn't already exist. Then I'm going to go back to the start function and we can recreate that if statement. And so if audio listener dot volume equals zero, then my toggle dot is on equals false. Once you have this, we can then create a public function that we compare to the on value change of our toggle game object. So this is going to be a public void function called toggle audio on value change. This function requires a bool parameter, which I'm going to call audio in. And then inside this function, we're going to create an if statement, checking if audio in is true. And if it's true, then we want to set audio listener dot volume equal to one. We'll then create an else statement, which means audio in is false. And if audio in is false, we want to set audio listener dot volume equal to zero. And that's everything that we need for this script. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, all we have to do is attach this new script to our toggle game object. We then need to add an on value change element, and I'm going to drag in our mute toggle script, and then use the drop down menu to go to mute toggle, and then in the dynamic bool section, we need to select our function. And that should be it. Now to test this, I need to create an audio source game object. So I'm going to import some audio, which I have just this little button click sound effect. I'm then going to add an audio source to my scene. I'm going to drag in the sound file to the audio source component. I'm then going to rename this object and save it as a prefab. I can then remove it from my scene and we can then play our project. So as you can see, I can toggle on and off my little speaker icon. And then to test this, all I have to do is drag our new audio source prefab into the hierarchy. And when the audio is on, you can hear the sound play. 
and if I turn off the audio toggle, then when I drag more prefabs into the scene, you don't hear anything. So it looks like everything's working. Now the last thing that you might want to do is save this audio toggle game object as a prefab that you can then use in future projects. But that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. Now if you'd like access to the source code of this tutorial, you can become a supporter on our website at www.infogamerhub.com and then you'll be able to see and copy the code in the related post of this video. You can check the description below for more information. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.